readers will have noticed that some of the characters in this moving story speak and act inconsistently. We are not responsible for that. Human nature is never the same. Circumstances and various events change their mindset and behavior. Those who spoke and behaved in one way yesterday speak in a totally opposite manner today, they behave. At the beginning of the story, the great Palyavatare was the leader of a great royal conspiracy. Now he wanted to take the crime he had committed and risk his own life to atone for it. When the great Sambhuvarayar saw the lifeless body of Prince Karikalar, he tried to burn down his old mansion because he was worried that somehow the blame for the massacre should not fall on his family. Eager to put the blame on someone else, he also abandoned his son in the attempt. Now that he knew that the blame was not on him, and that he knew the depth of his love for his beloved daughter Vandiyadeva, he spoke differently. At the beginning of this story, we have made the readers believe that the fake Madhurandha who disappeared in Mudapalak is the real Madhurandha and that he himself is going to become the perfect Chola emperor. It was necessary for the plot. Why? Although Prime Minister Anuradha knew some of the old secrets, he felt that he and Madhurandaka should be crowned. He was not fully aware of the before and after events of that time. Therefore, he believed that Pali Madhurandhagar was not the son of Kandarada Thar, but the son of Sundara Chola and Mandakini. So he also got confused and had to behave in contradictions. In this story, we last saw that Arul Mazayadavar, whom we considered to be the best in honesty and Satya Chander, contradicted himself. He who had been saying all this time that he did not want the right of government, now suddenly changed his course and started telling many people that I will crown myself. Do we not need to point out that religious occasions were the reason for his conversion? Yes, Arul Mazayadeva's words left everyone there astonished and bewildered. At the same time, they also created a sense of peace in their minds. Everyone knew deep inside that Pawnee's Selvar was in every way worthy and entitled to climb the Chola Lion throne. They knew that this was also the wish of the vast majority of the people who lived in the Chola Empire. They were also worried about the possible consequences if someone else was made to ascend the throne against the general will of the people. But due to various reasons, none of the people present dared to ask Pawnee's Selvara to be crowned. Now Pawnee's son-in-law came forward and said, I am going to be crowned myself. To be crowned with their own hands. When he said that to the great reaper, there was peace and joy in everyone's hearts. A good decision has been made. But the embarrassing responsibility of making that decision has left us. They were satisfied and comforted. We have already seen that the extraordinary magnetic power that shone in Pawnee's Selvar made it impossible for anyone to speak against him in front of him. Why? Didn't we see that even the diamond-chested small gardener bowed his head and welcomed Pawnee's Selva when he saw him in person? Pariya Palyavatarayar learned that Pawnee's savior had stopped her attempt to take her own life. He also understood the meaning of his words. The prince's actions and words moved his soul. His body also trembled with emotion. Tears welled up in the eyes. The letter was written. My clan shudders to think how great a disaster it would have been. Prince. They are the ones who have the right to the Chola temple where their father lived. They are the ones who deserve to wear the jeweled crown of the Chola Empire. I used to carry them on my chest and shoulders when they were little boys, and always looking at their symbols and the lines adorning their arms, I used to say, you are going to be the king of Manatee who will rule this flower kingdom. I have been happy to tell hundreds of times about how Mother Kaveri carried them in the arms of Kaveri who fell from the stream and drowned. It was during these three years that I became a traitor by allowing the lustful and hostile religious rituals to spoil my mind. Pawnee's Wealth I have lost the ability to mount the Chola Lion and take the Manamakudam and put it on their heads, and my arms have also lost. The holiest thing I can do with these hands is to kill myself as an atonement for my crime. No, no. Never. There were many voices in that ministerial council. Sundara Chola said in a warm voice. Uncle. What is this word? What is this thing? What kind of betrayal have you done to the Chola clan? Nothing. You wanted to place my great-grandfather's sons on the throne instead of my sons. 
How is that a betrayal of the Chola clan? Instead of my sons, the Chola clan made a crown of jewels for my great father's son. Isn't that too much right? Even now, if you give me permission to speak my mind. First Minister Anuradhar interrupted, Lord. The voices of Aromas Hivarmar Thirumudi Sudamudi are being heard throughout this country. Thirukumar of Kandaradatha Devar, who has been living in ignorance for so long, has the same determination. Pani's wealth has come to the same conclusion. Now, there is no point in thinking about anything to the contrary. Said. I can't agree with any of you thinking that way. Said Santhana Muthanakia Madhurand Hakativar. My son is right. No more second thoughts. Said Sembian Matthew Iyar. Mother. There is no one here who can contradict their words. Let God's will be done. But is it not right that Uncle Palvoer wants to take his own life saying that he has betrayed our clan? He has betrayed the Chola clan by asking for the crowning of his sons, isn't it? Said the Emperor. The great Palavatere cleared his throat and said, Sir. Hear. Hear what a terrible disaster would have happened if my attempt had succeeded. I wanted to take my life without saying this. Mainly I hesitated to offend my brother Kalantagakangdar, who dreamed of nothing but the greatness of the Chola Empire. I have decided to be stoned and tell the truth. Emperor. He was the son of Vera Pandian, the hereditary enemy of the Chola clan, who was to be put on the Chola Singha.Han thinking that we were the sons of the great Kandaradatha. Ouch. No. It can't be. Voices rose in the press. Durga Parmswari sent that hero of the monkey clan to open my eyes. It was through him that I could learn these terrible secrets. I wanted to ask him some more news. This young Sambovarian killed him and left him in the north wind flood and came back. Near Mudan. Hearing this word, all the people there were stunned, only Kanamaran said, Sir. Anyway, that Vandiyadeva is also a member of the conspiratorial gang. What is the crime that I hunted him down and killed him? He said. The great scavenger glared back at him. At that time, Anuradha interrupted, Sir. Is this all he says that he has killed the hero of the monkey clan? What is certain that the person he stalked and killed was Vandiyadeva? He asked. Parthipendra said in a slightly calmer voice. Perhaps the truth will come out if the northward flood returns and flows westwards and brings the body of the deceased. He said. Who saw it? The north wind flood may flow back. Said Prime Minister Anuradhar. As if to confirm his words, the next moment the deity entered the mandapam with drops of water from the dripping wet cloths. The menacing look on his face and the disheveled condition in which he entered created a delusion in the minds of the onlookers as if the body of a drowned man had risen and moved by some trick. Aha! The flood of the north wind has returned. It has brought the dead back to life. Said Prime Minister Anuradhar. At that time, we should inform the readers how Vandiyadeva came to that kolam. After Pani's Selvar, Kundave Devi and others left him alone, Vandiyadeva was very depressed. He who was eager to impress the world with heroic deeds did not like the fact that many people felt sorry for him. It seemed to him that this palace and the prison of Andapura was more deadly than the underground prison. By the favor of Pani's Selva they would probably let him go without charging him with the crime of killing Kari Kalar and without punishing him for it. But everyone in the palace must have had a suspicion about him. He will be regarded as tainted. The kindness and sympathy the younger Brata shows him stops there. Holding hands and marrying Pani's son-in-law Selvara, who is going to be crowned as the emperor of the Chola Empire, is a dream come true. The ladies of the palace would treat him like a servant who had been forgiven for some crime. Ministers and generals would look at him with disgust. The will of the royal family can often change. Who knows how long Prince Aromas Hivarmar will show his admiration for him. Ministers and generals would look at him with disgust. The will of the royal family can often change. Who knows how long Prince Aromas Hivarmar will show his admiration for him. Ministers and generals would look at him with disgust. The will of the royal family can often change. 
who knows how long Prince Aralmas Hivarmar will show his admiration for him. Aha! If Sendan had mounted his horse near Amuthan's hut as he had originally intended, he would have reached Kadakare in this time. Why? He may have gone to the island of Elam. Who was riding on the horse when he was attacked by the doctor's son? One was a thinker who was known as the madman. Actually he is not crazy but manipulative. Who went with him? They say we will see the old mad Huranthak Devar. Could it be him? Yes, yes. It should be like that. There is something meaningful about the two of them running away together. How many people will be surprised if the people here know who that mad Hakar really is? What will be the result if both of them join the Elam country safely? Why? For the crown of Pandian country, he who belongs to Ratnaharit will attain them. With the help of Mahinda, the war will start again to reach the country. If only we can prevent it from happening, only one person has the power to prevent it. What is the use of hiding here in this palace and living in that room? With all these thoughts in mind, Devon was circling around the room. Often he would come to the side of the computer on one side of the room and look out eagerly. He came from an upper floor room in the palace. It was moving towards the north. There the outer wall of the palace was also the outer wall of the Tanjore fort. If you jump down through the platform, you can jump into the flood or descend the steep wall with some effort and reach the north wind flood. Beneath the dais there appeared to be a doorway and steps leading down to the palace Bender River to bathe. I don't know how to go down from the loft to reach that door. That would be known to the nurses and princesses of that place. If he was going to run away, they should go without knowing. While he was thinking like this while standing by the computer, a sight that appeared in the distance startled him. In the palace garden next to the palace where he was, a woman was running frantically like a maniac. Aha! Isn't it like the palace garden of the great gardener? Yes, yes. That gardener. Who is the girl running like crazy? God! Doesn't it look like our glass? What happened to her? Why is she running like that? He remembered all the help she had done for him in the Kadamper mansion on the night of Karakalar's death, and his heart swelled with wonder. Behind her, two more old women ran as if running to catch up with her. But they came and stayed. It is impossible for them to catch Manamegali. There she came to the wall of the outer wall. She climbed the wall by holding onto a tree that grew on the side of the wall. Alas! What is she doing? A small knife is shining in her hand. So what is she going to do? God! The head fell from the wall into the flood of the river. Once upon a time in Viranarayana Lake, Manamegala and Nandini were in the water, and when he first intended to take Manamegali and then lifted Nandini to the shore, then the disappointment that Manamegali experienced, in that one moment, Vandiyadeva's mind flowed. He could not stand idly above that. He came out from the top floor of the palace through the balcony and jumped into the river. He gasped for a few moments and then managed to look around. Yes, near the place where he jumped, the pot at Uram Mandapam and the door leading from it were found. In the opposite direction, Manamegala jumped down from the top of the wall. Fortunately, the river flood was coming towards him. If the clouds come floating in the flood, you should come towards him. Vandiyathevan reached the bank of the river after a scramble. He walked quickly against the flood of the river. Aha! Is she floating in the hour cloud? Is there life in her body? Or is it an inanimate body? Alas! Will he have the temerity to carry the lifeless body of someone he loved again? Damn! How much did the girl love him? The tone of the song she sang while playing the lyre in the lakeside hall of Viranere and Apurat floated in the air like her body floated in the flood. It caused immense pain to Vandiyathevan. He somehow endured the pain and swam in the flood and picked up Manamegali with both hands. Gods! Save this woman's life! I go to every temple in the Chola country and prostrate myself on the ground at every shrine. I go to Shiva Temple, Vishnu Temple, Amon Temple, Ayanur Temple, and thank each deity. Just save the life of this innocent girl. 
Having thus prayed to various deities in his mind, Vandiyathevan brought Manimi Kala to Padatura. Already coming back from death's door with a spear wound, he was further weakened by the shock of his sudden jump into the river flood. He caught his breath as he walked across the river carrying the heavy bell cloud due to drowning. It seemed impossible to carry her any further. So, seeing that the top of the step was wide, he placed the Manamekali on it. Then he thought for a moment what to do. Manamekali's body still had life in it. But he couldn't do anything to revive her. Immediately someone needs a woman's help. Go inside the palace and fetch someone from there. He saw before his eyes the gate which led to Paitutura from inside the palace. He went near it and used all the strength left in his body to slam against the possible door. Fortunately the inner latch of the door broke and the door opened. He ran through the open door. It was a narrow path for a while. Then came the porches and courtyards. No one was found there. Is there no one here? Is there no one to save a girl? He ran around screaming. At last two servants tried to stop him at the door of a large hall. He pushed past them and entered. He was astonished to see the emperor sitting there on a noble throne surrounded by many men and women. When he first realized that the lady before his eyes was Punguzali, he gained some courage. Say Mathira Kumari. Say Mathira Kumari. Manamegali has fallen into the river. Come at once and save her. He screamed.